dropping a skiff at the border of Texas and Mexico, dropping in Port Isabel. Um, we're going to start at the Rio Grande and we're running the skiffs 300 and some odd miles all the way to Sabine Pass, Louisiana. So we're starting with clear water and ending with the semi-muddy water of Louisiana. And the conditions here are anything but kind to anyone that wants to go out on the water. I think God has designed nature to bring the best parts of us out. As uncomfortable as this situation is going to be, I know there's going to be nights because I'm in a two-man tent with Cotter and we're going to be salty and smelly, but we're going to be having the time of our lives. That's what this boat does to you. It's a vessel to get us from the Mexico border to Louisiana, but it's also a vessel to develop our own characters. As cheesy as that sounds, it's the truth. Forget your foregone conclusions Settle in, settle now Give up your sweet illusions Cause your walls are falling down My name is Pete. What do, you, what do you want to know about what I do? I do a lot of things. Sometimes I drive a boat. Mostly what I do is I drive a boat. The size varies a lot. So my day job, I drive a 308 foot icebreaker. And then for fun, I drive a 17 foot, six inch skiff. And uh, yeah, pretty much it's just what I want to do is drive boats and be outside. I've had the opportunity to live in Maine, Virginia, Texas, South Carolina, Florida, Wyoming. In my sea travels, I've made it to every single continent, circumnavigated the globe, just been all over the world. I don't know the number of countries I've visited, but quite a handful of them. And the first time that I went you know deep into the texas marsh it i don't think it took more than two seconds for me to immediately just fall in love with it hi boys louisiana baby louisiana baby sitting here on the mexico border about to go catch us a snook first then we're heading north I have a hard time wrapping my mind around us not finishing this trip. Like I realize that some of these bay crossings and some of these ship channels are going to be pretty nuts and chaotic in such a small boat. 
Like if we don't make it on this trip, I would like to see what it is that actually stops us. It's happened. We're here and uh, so words at this point can't really describe how excited I am to just start. Man, when we, when we put that boat in in South Bay and we were looking at the blue water, just the excitement and the, the feeling of freedom, as cliche as that is, of the boat was finally in the water after all these months of preparation and thought and planning and we were there and we ran straight to South Bay and immediately started seeing fish. Um, I mean, that first 30 minutes was spectacular. Oh, you're gonna have to go further. He's right at the end. He's right at the end. Get it further. 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 Get it I, I didn't see it, like it, it just all clicked at the wrong time. So you stopped moving, I saw him and he realized it wasn't a fish. And that was that was our story of the three of us. Literally just showed up, I was like, Pete, there's, there's reds up there. First little cove we look at. Yeah. <laughs> just, they're everywhere right now. As we've been talking about the conditions and the wind, I mean, that's something that, that you're gonna deal with on the Texas coast you know, regardless of what month it is and regardless of where you're fishing. And so uh, being someone who's relatively new to saltwater fly fishing, uh, there's a lot of little tweaks and differences in casting, especially when you see redfish and a good redfish and you really, really want to catch the redfish. Uh, all of a sudden, all those things that you know and that you practice, you just throw them, you know, into the wind, pun intended. <laughs> So Cole and Peter have been extremely gracious with tips and with advice and the, you know the reality is everybody's whatever level that you are in fly fishing the ma you know what matters is that you are continuing to get out there continuing to learn Oh, oh it's a good cast good uh -huh. That's a good fish That's a good fish dude whatever you just hooked into Dude! First fish. We went the wrong way. We found a fish. It's oh, a snook, dude. I think it's a snook. I think it's a lady fish. Oh, dang it. You're right. You said poor man's starfish. <laughs> I, I can't believe it didn't jump. I guess I know. it's poor man's hook. It's got some pretty colors. That's cool. Alright, into the water. So, the first day, man, the lower Laguna was. It was a little sketchy, um, but not to the point where I was like, oh, we're about to die. But when we put, I know we put two waves over the front of the boat and we just got soaked. And we look at Peter and Peter is just like shaking his head. And then Michael and I proceeded to just cheer on and Michael's got his little chair and he's doing some rodeo stuff. And man, honestly, just having somebody in control of the boat who's built his life and career on the water. Like I, I wasn't even nervous. Coming through the lagoon, which does not have swell islands. Um, there's no real good place to hide a skiff. It's really nothing. It's just a wide open body of water. And with the southeast wind that we've had, it leaves the whole bay in terms of fetch for the wind. So those, those swells can just build and build and build. Um, and they don't really have, the only limiting factor is water depth. And 
especially out in the middle, like there's enough water out there that, that those swells can get where they're too much for a skiff to get across. Rickerson yeah, I just for the largest redfish caught. Only one of the day, but well, you know. The largest redfish caught? It was the largest. Uh, I just want to shout out to my mom. I couldn't have got this crab call award without my mom. <laughs> Peter Capel had a beast on the pole today. Peter's just Peter's mad he didn't get the crab call award. There's been a couple of times where we have beached the boat in areas that, you know, regardless of tide and wind, the water dropped out more than expected. And, you know, there's been a couple of times that we've been in shin deep mud, pushing the boat uh, across a flat that was supposed to be not shallow. <laughs> uh, yeah, somebody prematurely turned the water off. But it was, and you know, that's part of finding new waters. That's part of the adventure. That's part of um, learning a new coast and learning a new flat. And you know, you can't learn it without being there and without doing the thing. And our doing the thing involves some boat pushing and some effort and a little bit extra blood, sweat, and tears. And I think it was well worth it. We were there, we did it, we crossed it. I could go around the world, finest diamonds, precious pearls, They'd all turn to dust in my hand Seven wonder city streets Ocean air and mountain peaks They are not the finest in the land Much more than these I have seen firsthand Cause there ain't nothing There ain't nothing There ain't nothing like coming home to you And no matter where Brothers laugh and lovers cry Hold each other up when we can't stand Back home with my family It's right there where I want to be It's all I need to be a rich man There ain't nothing There ain't nothing There ain't nothing like coming home to you And no matter where
right there where I want to be. It's all I need to be a rich man. So the Turbo Box guys, uh, I was sweating for a hot minute because I knew that they had a really rough run up the Laguna Madre to get into the land cut, and I knew we were waiting in the land cut for them. I was sweating bullets, and then they finally show up. You'll survive the crossing. Easily one of the greatest parts about this trip has been Will and Reagan from Turtle Box joining up with us and bringing the big energy. Uh, having those guys as part of the trip was, you know, they are guys who, who love to get out and adventure and fish, but they also really, really love the fellowship. Just to see that tan and green Sabine skiff ripping through the land cut, knowing like, all right, our crew is here and these are guys that we've never met and immediately show up and they're all smiles and they just have this energy about them that man it set the tone for the rest of the trip but when they showed up it was like all right it's it's on like these guys are salt of the earth and man i consider them some really good friends now and the energy that they brought man it it changed the trip it would not have been the same without them Fishing conditions, they've, they've been tough. Um, just the weather we're facing, to be honest, some of these weather conditions are not weather conditions that I would fish my home waters in just because they're so rough. So it's made fishing really difficult. And uh, this morning we got up, um, got the boat moving, started working down a shoreline, found a redfish with his back out of the water. I got a cast down in front of him, it was a little offshore of him, and just slowly moving that fly along, and it came into his, his line of sight, and he lunged on it, and, and honestly, like, I thought that was it. I thought he was gonna make a break for deeper water, that was it, he was gone. Let's go! Yes! Let's go! Woo! Let's go, Pete! Let's go! But no, he lunged right on that fly, picked it up, um, Set the hook, felt like a solid hook set, and uh, he took off. He was running. Um, he had some gas in the tank. He's probably been feeding really good all night. He's got some energy, and he went for a run. So I started fighting him, fighting him, fighting him, and um, he kept making, he'd get close to the boat, and then he kept making really solid runs. And just had a lot of energy. Um, I think like the third or fourth run, he turned and the hook came out. And I just immediately felt it go limp. And uh, <sighs> having not put a fish in the boat yet on this trip, like that kind of, it hurt a lot. Yeah, so my, my polling experience is, is limited, is one way to put it. Um, I mean, there have been a few instances where I've been on other people's boats where I have uh, fought through some conditions and stuff, but this trip has kind of been a whole other beast. That first day, I mean, I just, I got bloodied up blisters and man, it, the Texas coast has absolutely beat my body up. And coming into this trip, having limited polling experience, I was a little nervous for that because 
I mean, the person on the platform is really, I mean, he's the, is the brains behind the operation and you, you got to have multiple polars in order to have multiple successful fishermen on the front of the boat. And, um, you know, that first day we were going in circles. Uh, that wind was just having its way with me and my shoulders were burning and Peter has basically put the fly rod down at the front of the boat and he's just like, pull left, pull right, pull left. And honestly, probably not even expecting to get a shot. And, and honestly, that's just part of it. And I think a lot of people don't want to go and learn a new skill because they're afraid of failing and and people they're afraid of what people are going to think of them and it exposes their ignorance and i think when you're learning a new skill you have to not be afraid of not being good at it otherwise you're never going to try to learn new skills and so i kept telling peter every time I, my shoulders would burn out i get like a 30 minute break i'm back let me back up there and you know just after after doing it a bunch and fighting through the wind you start learning the little nuances not that i have totally got it figured out but I can I can go in a somewhat straight line down a as long as the winds in my back of course so, I mean it's it's kind of where I enjoy to be I mean yesterday I, I didn't even pick up a fly rod I just enjoyed either being behind the camera or being up on top of the platform because you just get to see the ocean from a whole new point of view when you're up there and man it's a it's a lot of fun Everything on this dadgum coast is just tough and thorny and spiky and wants to bite you. I mean, last night we had a crab crawling on top of our tent. I'm sitting in thorn bushes with spiky bushes here and yuccas behind me. Everything just is out to get you. The secrets of this coast are not given. The people will not give it to you. This coast will not just hand it over to you. You have to earn every single secret that you learn out here. From the spots that you find to the different islands that we've been camping on that have been epically cool. I mean, we just get to show up and camp on these islands that are sweet. And they've got all sorts of wildlife. We had deer coming up to our tent last night and it's been an incredible experience. So we pulled, we pulled the boat up yesterday at our campsite and we started propping up tents and just kind of poking around. We had pulled down a shoreline and had been unable to get into a flat area because of the water depth. And so we pulled the boat up, set up camp, and then Cole immediately beelined and took off for the flat with his fly rod. And I looked over to Peter and said, well, we can't let him have the whole flat to himself. And so Peter said, well, I gotta get my tent set up or whatever he said. And so I grabbed the fly rod and started walking after Cole and he kind of took a left route around the bay and so I just figured I would walk straight just straight through the bay to the other side and try and get the wind where I had some advantage in casting. I saw one of some of the seagrass some of the sea marsh kind of part a little bit and we had been seeing a ton of mullet and so at first I thought oh that's a big mullet coming through there but then the wake kind of pushed and got bigger and I thought well that's a really big mullet and then the wake pushed and got bigger and I saw a head come out of the water and I thought that's a red head. And then the, it continued to get bigger and then the eyes came out of the water. And at this point, I'm, I'm just trying to get the fly out of this hand and into the water. 
it was it was 10 feet away, so there wasn't really much of a cast other than lay the fly into the water. And so I just laid it down and made one strip, and it was it all just lined up perfectly. He hit it hard. I mean, did a complete 180 to to eat it, and then was off to the races. <laughs> I didn't even have time to think about it. My heart was pounding. Beyond excited, e easily was the best Texas redfish that I've ever caught. Uh, the race was born out of two high school hero athletes who still enjoy a bit of good old fashioned competition. I believe there was one night in college that Cole and I decided to race. And Cole won that race, and I might have felt like there was some factors that played into that one that put me at a disadvantage. Um, and so we definitely needed a rematch and have been trying to find a good time for a rematch. And when we were, one of the campsites had a good 40 yards of sand, uh, hard pack sand that was good for running. We, we didn't have much of a choice, but we, you know, we had to race then and there. Why'd y'all have to take your shirts off to race? I took my shirt off because he took his shirt off. Aerodynamics. Aerodynamics. I didn't want to be at a disadvantage. Gotcha, yep. Makes sense. This is ridiculous. I shouldn't have even granted Michael another race. In college, I smoked him in a 40-yard dash, and he still has not quite come to terms with that. And I was like, Mike, it's time to redo that 40 and seal this up for good. And of course, the Turtle Box guys and Peter are all like, you guys absolutely have to do this. Is this a thing? You, we're not leaving this island until you guys race. Y'all ready? Ready? Set? Go! Go! Oh! I couldn't tell. I don't know. <laughs> First race was dead tight. Like we still don't know who won that first race, and I will give Michael that, and I'm proud of him for that. We need a. We need a. That was by a nose. We need someone to watch the line. To video the line. Runners, take your mark. Get set. Go. When Cole got married, we gathered around the fire and talked about Cole's positive traits and we left out the negative traits. And one of the positive traits that we everyone hit on was his passion. And he gets locked into things and is incredibly passionate about things like fishing and bow hunting. And apparently foot races fall into that category of incredibly passionate because after the first couple races, and definitely I was fueling the fire, Will and Reagan were fueling the fire, and then Peter even hopped in at the end with a little bit of controversy attempting to you know, add some more kerosene to the flame. And when you got four guys who are working up, a dude who's already highly competitive, it, it, it was good TV, to say the least. <laughs> but for the time being, it's nice to know that I'm still faster than him. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Mm-hmm. <laughs> 